This is part 47 of Bootstrap tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss the Bootstrap Scroll Spy plugin. The Scroll Spy plugin automatically highlights the navigation links based on the scroll position to indicate where the user is currently on the page. So here is what we want to do. On this page, we are going to have few images like this. At the top, we have these navigation links. As we scroll down the page to view these images, we want the respective navigation links within this nav bar to be highlighted automatically. Let's see how to achieve this using the Scroll Spy plugin. Let's flip to Visual Studio. What we've got here at the moment is within the images folder, we've got five images. And within the body section, we've got a div element with class container. Inside this, we have another development. I have given it an ID of div desert. We also have applied this custom style class, div style. This class is present in this style sheet, custom styles.css. If we look at the definition of this class, all we are doing is applying 40 pixels padding at the top. And then we have this h1 element, which basically contains the name of the image that we are displaying using the image element here. Notice this image element is pointing to the desert image within the images folder. And we are also using image responsive class on this image element to make the image responsive. We also have four such other developments here, each pointing to a different image. So this development is pointing to Lighthouse. This one is pointing to Tulips, this one to Jellyfish, and finally this one to Penguins. So if we view this HTML in the browser, this is how it looks like at the moment. So we've got those five images right here. So in addition to these images, we also want these navigation links at the top. We discussed navbar component in part 28 of this video series. I've copied the HTML that we discussed in part 28, and I'm going to paste that HTML just about this container div. I'm not going to go over this HTML because we discussed this in detail in part 28. So let's save the changes. Now, when we reload this page, notice we get the navigation bar at the top. We don't need the search text box, submit button, and the subscribe link here. So let's remove some of the HTML. I'm going to delete this form element and this unordered list. So let's delete those two elements, save our changes, reload our web page. Now we only have these navigation links. Now we want this nav bar to be aligned with the rest of the content on the page. So what I'm going to do is place these two developments, this one and this one, inside another development with class container. So let's create a development with class container and then move this closing div right here. So now these two developments are present inside a container. Let's save our changes, reload our web page. Now notice the nav bar is aligned with the content. Now we want a different color scheme. So we want this black color. Now at the moment, we are using nav bar default class. Instead of that, I'm going to use nav bar inverse class. Let's reload this page. So we get a different color scheme. And at the moment, when we scroll down, look at that. The nav bar scrolls along with the page. We don't want that. We want this navigation bar to be fixed at the top of the page. And to achieve that, we are going to use another class. And that is nav bar fix at top. Let's save our changes, reload our web page. So now the navigation bar is fixed at the top. At the moment, these links does not work. And we also want to change the link text here. So let's do that. So we want the text to be desert, lighthouse, you know, basically the names of the images. So let's include those names here. So this is going to be desert. Let's change this to lighthouse, tulips. And now those are the first three links. The fourth one, we want that to be a drop down. So I'm going to include another list item here. And the class for this is going to be a drop down. Inside this list item, let's create an anchor element. The href attribute is point to point to hash. And the class on this is going to be drop down toggle. And we also need data dash toggle attribute. And the value for this is going to be drop down. And the text on this drop down is going to be animals. And next to that, we also want this little downward pointing arrow. 
So the text will be animals. To get that little downward pointing arrow, we are going to use pan element with class caret. And then we want the drop down menu items. The drop down menu items are going to be jellyfish and penguins. To get those drop down menu items, we are going to use an unordered list with class drop down menu. And inside this, we are going to create a list item. And inside that, an anchor element. The href attribute is going to point to hash. And the text is going to be jellyfish. And we need penguins. All right, let's save our changes and reload this page. So we have our links there. At the moment, these links are not working. So let's link these navigation links with the images. Now, if you look at these images on the page, notice the div element that contains the image has got an ID. So we are going to use these IDs to link them up with the navigation links right here. So we are going to use the jQuery ID selector. So the ID of the div here, which contains the desert image, is div desert. So I'm going to copy its ID. And then this desert link here within the nav bar is going to point to that. And here we are using the jQuery ID selector, which is hash. Let's do the same thing with the other images. This is going to be div lighthouse. And this one will be div tulips. And similarly, this one will be div jellyfish. And this one is going to be div penguins. All right, let's save our changes, reload our web page, and now our links should work. So all of them are working as expected. OK, now what we want to do is as we scroll down, we want the respective navigation links to be highlighted automatically. So let's look at the configuration required for the scroll spy plugin. So here are the attributes and some of the configuration required for the scroll spy plugin. First attribute that we need here is the data dash spy attribute. This attribute is supplied on the element that is being spied on. In our example, we're going to spy on the body element because it's the element that contains the images that we want to scroll through. So on the body element, I'm going to use data dash spy attribute. And the value for this is going to be scroll. In addition to this, I'm also going to use data dash target attribute. This attribute is used to link the scrollable element, that is the body element, with the navigation element, that is this nav bar. At the moment, this nav bar does not have an ID. Let's give it an ID. Let's call this main nav bar. We're going to use this ID to link it with the scrollable element, that is with this body element. So let's use the jQuery ID selector here, and then the ID of the navigation bar, which is main nav bar. In addition, I'm also going to use another optional data dash attribute, and that is data dash offset. This attribute specifies the number of pixels to offset from top when calculating scroll position. This attribute is extremely useful to control when you want the navigation links to be highlighted as we are scrolling through the images. This attribute is optional, and the default is 10 pixels. For now, I'm going to use 10 pixels. In a bit, we'll discuss more about this attribute. Another change that is required is on the body element, you know, where we have applied data as pi is equal to scroll, it also requires CSS position style to be set to relative. So within the head section, let's include a section for style. Type is going to be text slash CSS. And then for the body element, we're going to set position to relative. All right, so with all these changes, let's reload our web page. And at the moment, we are viewing desert image. And notice the navigation link right here. Desert is highlighted. And as we scroll through, and when we're viewing lighthouse, look at that lighthouse navigation link is highlighted. Similarly, as we scroll through, and when we are viewing tulips, tulips link is highlighted. And when we are viewing jellyfish, animals is highlighted. And when we drop this down, notice jellyfish is highlighted. And as we keep scrolling down, notice penguins is highlighted now. And look at that as we are navigating through, 
the respective navigation links are highlighted. Now let's discuss a little bit more about this data dash offset. At the moment we're using the default which is 10. Let's use 500. Let's reload our web page and look at this. We have changed it to 500 and at the moment we are viewing desert. Desert link is highlighted. As we scroll down look at that though we are not viewing lighthouse completely it has automatically highlighted lighthouse navigation link that's because we have set the data dash offset to 500 pixels so here we are highlighting the navigation link too early now if we set it to negative 500 let's reload this and notice at the moment we are viewing desert and now we are viewing lighthouse but still it is not highlighted and halfway through that's when it is highlighting lighthouse so here we are highlighting the navigation link too late so basically you know this attributes lets you control when you want the navigation links to be highlighted for our example the default which is 10 is working correctly so I'm going to leave it right there so that is scroll spy plugin Thank you for listening and have a great day.